Hello everyone, my name is Pixorius and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. We're here underneath the dragon skeleton that we built in the last episode. Appreciate everybody's feedback on that, but we are going to be leaving the dragon skeleton for now. I might tweak it a little bit here and there later on, but we have other business to attend to. Like the fact that this museum is in theory going to be storing every block and item it is possible to obtain in the game. Therefore, we are going to need one heck of a storage system for this build <laughs> because we're going to need to store all of it, not to mention the fact that in the process of flattening out all of the terrain around here, I've acquired a pretty sizable amount of materials and I would like some place to store it that is not smack dab in the middle of the museum here or just like slightly off center which has actually been annoying me since i started setting up all of the centered stuff in the museum with the entrances and the central portal and the dragon skeleton and everything all of this is just like slightly off to one side not to mention once again the fact that i have storage over there i have a little bit of storage that will pop into view over there there we go from taking down some of the stuff on either side so i kind of need somewhere to put all of these blocks so that we will have somewhere we can easily access them when we want to start using them for areas of the museum, whether it be for decoration, for the walls and the interior structure of the museum, for the exterior, or even to display in the exhibits. We're going to need some place to put it all. And for that, we're going to establish the museum archives, which is going to be a pretty sizable storage system underneath the floor of the museum itself. And I'm thinking what I want to do, because the entrance to the next room is going to be over here, I think I want to set up basically a staircase that goes down on either side over here and over there just so we can have basically two entrances and we can come in and out wherever we want to. It's going to be closed off to the public in theory, <laughs> but I think what we're going to do is have a set of stairs here that are like staff only and then you go into there and you find the storage system under the ground, which once again is going to mean doing a lot of digging and getting a lot of resources from that, which should hopefully eventually get used in the building of the museum itself. But for now, I think we just need to create a couple of staircases down, dig out an area and start to plan exactly how much storage we are going to need. So I've been working underground a little bit, as you can tell from the fact that there are mobs burning all around me and we now have a couple of staircases leading to the same corridor, a bit of a switch back here, and another switch back taking us down to the area I'm going to think of as the archives. So down here we're going to have a pretty large storage system, and I say pretty large, we're going to design it so it can hold basically every item that we can throw into this thing, either in filtered chests or in a general storage which is going to take care of the non-stackable items, basically anything we wouldn't be able to feed through a normal item filter. The other thing I've done is dig a hole directly between these two staircases that leads basically underneath the dragon's tail, and the idea behind this is that I want to be able to throw items onto the floor or st stuff them in a chest or something like that, basically my entire inventory can just get dumped into one thing and it will all come down here and all get sorted automatically into the storage chests regardless of whether or not we've come down here. So I don't want any manual storage here, I just want to be able to dump off all of the supplies I brought with me and basically sort them out later is the idea. So down here we're going to have a system of hoppers or you know a, a drop that leads into a system of hoppers. The hoppers are going to spit stuff out via a dropper clock. It's going to go around a system here that's going to have water streams carrying stuff along to the different hoppers and all of the hoppers are going to sort the items into different chests depending on what kind of items we throw in here. There will naturally be some things that require a lot of extra storage because look at the amount of stone and dirt and stuff we're collecting from this and there are going to be some things like say corn flowers where we probably won't need more than a single or maybe a double chest's worth of storage overall because we're not going to be seeing a huge amount of those throughout the course of the museum but we are going to need a lot of storage space for bulk resources things that we're getting in large quantities stone kind of being the number one around here so we'll work in a bunch of areas like that where large bulk storage silos can be built but I think the main thing we're going to do to start off with is have a bunch of water streams leading around and they're going to lead around in a circle so that anything that doesn't get picked up by the item filters early on is going to be picked up by stuff a little bit later but we have to make sure it's a loop that the items can travel around within five minutes otherwise the items would end up despawning so we do have to be a little bit careful about how large we make this storage system it's potentially going to be pretty big but hopefully it shouldn't be so big that items will end up getting lost in the process so right now i'm trying to work out a few of the logistics of this item storage system and where certain components are going to go for a start if we have a water stream coming down here it's going to have to hit a honey block so that it can align the items 
alongside the hoppers, which are presumably going to be facing this way, like so, which means we'll end up having a series of chests that we can interact with either inside this area or outside that area. And the staircases are going to come down to a level where we can interact with the chest and go underneath the storage system, which is going to be transferring items all the way around. In that respect, we are probably going to skip a few hoppers here because obviously we're walking down into an area where... Oh, am I... Yeah, there's a ghost block somewhere around there. We're going to be walking down into an area where we don't want to just run into a line of chests. So the hoppers are probably going to skip out this 3x3 section here and then continue on the opposite side. But the water stream is going to have to go over the top, so we have to leave room for that. There is a few different things that we have to think about when we are building this whole thing up. But I think it's going to look pretty grand having all of the item storage basically in one place and having a bunch of chests that just have every conceivable item that we will need. I do want this area to look a little bit fancy as well, so I am trying to decorate as I go, just kind of plotting stuff out and sketching things here and there. Maybe this isn't permanent, maybe it's going to stick around for a little bit longer, but I like the idea of having wooden arches and beams holding this place up as though, once again, it has been here for a while and has maybe been modernized over time. But naturally, the storage system is going to include a lot of things like chests and barrels. It's not going to look particularly modern in itself, so going for a super modern look down here doesn't quite seem like the right thing to do. I like the idea of a museum having a collection of old dusty chests and drawers and barrels and all kinds of storage that's just accumulated over time and has just been left down here with all of the stuff in it. So I'm going to dig out a little bit more of this area. We're going to try and work out the path of the water stream and then we have to do a little bit of maths to figure out exactly how many chests we are going to need. And I was taking a quick break from working on the storage system to go and find some packed ice. I was looking for an iceberg biome in the local area and I stumbled upon this. And this is the first example of one of these that I've really been able to find in the overworld because so much of my overworld was generated before the 1.16 update. But I thought this was really worth exploring on camera with you guys because this is a ruined portal that you can find sometimes in the overworld. And as you'll see, I don't have my respiration helmet on because I'm too used to going to the nether with this gold helmet on, but this is a ruined portal that you can find underwater in the overworld, surrounded by magma blocks and various other things. They may also occasionally, I believe, have some chests nearby that will contain some stuff, but there is netherrack in the overworld, along with some obsidian and crying obsidian, a couple of gold blocks often hanging above the portal, and a few items that you probably wouldn't get unless you went to the nether to get them. And so it's really interesting having the opportunity to collect netherrack in the overworld from these things. And you will find them on land occasionally as well. But I think it's really cool that we can now find these built in the overworld, kind of giving you an idea that the nether can be found without having to worry about looking it up on the Minecraft wiki or something like that. Now, I don't see a chest around here, so it looks like we may be denied the loot aspect of these for now, but you never know, you might find one with a loot chest hanging around on the surface in the overworld, and it's pretty cool just to find one of these things in this world that's been around since Minecraft 1.13.
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse and wow, yeah, this is this is quite the project it turns out and I may have bitten off more than I can chew for this video at least. I've done about all the mining I care to do and by the way, this the recording of this video has coincided with the hottest weather that we've had in the UK for a while. So apologies if you can hear a fan in the background. It's positioned towards my feet so it doesn't interfere with the microphone as much, but I am trying my best to keep cool. Hence why I've done so much of this work in time lapses instead of in other forms because I just couldn't I, I, I couldn't commentate while I was doing any of this. <laughs> I just couldn't have my headphones on. Thankfully now I'm recording in the evening and it's a little bit cooler. And uh, speaking of things that are cooler, I want to show you some cooler approaches to storage because while all of this is naturally pretty large and a lot of this is going to occupy itself with the various blocks that we can acquire in the game. I'm thinking these middle six here are going to be wood and then there's going to be stone and all its variants and then, you know, nether items and stuff like that as well. We're probably not going to need this amount of storage for all of the items in the game. Think about all of the different items that you can acquire in Minecraft and exactly how many of them I can expect to produce for this museum. I doubt I will be needing a full double chest or more of things like buttons for example. And we're going to use buttons as the main example here because they actually look kind of pretty if you put them all in a row. So I'm going to grab all of the materials that I can get buttons made out of. Things like wood and even uh, polished blackstone has buttons now. We have the warped and crimson wood to throw in there as well. And then I'm going to show you a really interesting blast from the past storage idea. So I've come back up here to the surface layer of the museum mostly because I'm kind of done looking at that space down there for now. It's all disorganized and messy and we will continue to work on that as the museum project continues but for now I want to show you guys this. This is partly inspired by a guy called Red Nomster who used to make YouTube videos a while ago. I'm not sure what's happened to him these days, but back in the day, back in like 2016, 2017, he was making some really interesting and innovative Minecraft tutorials. I will leave a link to the video that inspired this particular storage idea in the description of this video if you want to go and check that out. Highly recommend it. But we're going to start off doing some stuff with minecart chests and minecart hoppers because there is actually a lot of untapped potential with these in particular. And in this shulker box here, which is marked TNT, but I don't have any TNT at the moment, I have all of the different buttons that you can acquire in the game. We've got ourselves warped and crimson buttons, we've got polished blackstone, we've got stone, and we've got the six natural overworld wood types. I'm fairly certain these are all the buttons. I'm not missing like a quartz button or anything like that. And I've got a bit of rail here. We've got some powered rail that we're going to use in a second. The first thing I want to do is pop down a single rail here, place the hopper minecart on top of that, and then, importantly, break the rail underneath. And we're going to see why we do that in a second but I'm going to take the rail out of there for now. We're going to build up a few blocks here, we're going to hop up one and we're going to place the chest minecart on top of this like so. We're also going to find some items that I can use to fill this minecart hopper. For now I'm just going to use coal because I have it in my inventory but non-stackable items will probably work best if you want to use this storage system for various different things. So I'm going to place the chest minecart on top of here, we're going to fill it with all of the different types of buttons that I have in here and this is actually going to be quite a neat way of storing all of these. So we've got oak, we've got uh, birch, spruce, dark oak, acacia, jungle, we've got the two warped and crimson, we've got the polished blackstone, and we've got the stone. And we could fill up potentially a bunch more items in here. That's just uh, 10 items that we've filled up. We can potentially get another 17 in here before the chest is all full. We're going to break this block, allowing the chest minecart to fall on top of the hopper minecart. And I've grabbed another piece of wood that I've turned into a button, and you can actually now use the hopper minecart cart full as it currently is with all of these other items to select an item to pull a stack out of the chests above which means that has now drained all but one of the oak buttons which could then be refilled into this chest by placing a hopper above it. Now we can't place a hopper facing down directly into the minecart chest there because of course it's not a solid block so there's nothing we can place the hopper against. What instead we are going to do is actually do a little bit of piston pushing of these blocks here. I'm going to pop a couple of pistons down so that we can push some blocks into the same area as these chest minecart and hopper minecart. And that is hopefully, if I just use that one, there we go. That's going to allow us to place a hopper facing downwards into the chest here. So now if I take that block away, that's going to get sucked up somewhere or is probably just going to be lurking around on the surface here. There we go. I can now replace the stack of buttons in there with the piece of coal and I can load the buttons back into that first minecart chest using the hopper above it. And this is basically a set of storage shelves and they kind of look like shelves a little bit or, or drawers or something like that and effectively what we want to do is have this hopper minecart be the system by which we call items from the chests above it 
Just to demonstrate that again with a different item here, if I use the polished blackstone button instead, I'm going to pop that in there, and once again, it calls all of the polished blackstone buttons. You could even do this with multiple items if you wanted to, because all you need to do is then replace the stacks in here with the non-stackable item you're using, in this case we're substituting a bit of coal, and you can just call as many items as you want to out of it using this system, as long as you have one of them in your inventory to begin with. So you might be wondering what's so special about this concept, why even bother using hopper minecarts and chest minecarts when you could just use an ordinary chest? Well, because these are entities, because they can exist in the same block space as each other, then you can actually stack a whole bunch of chest minecarts in this same location. And we have to be a little bit careful here because, of course, if I end up nudging any of these minecarts, they can get a little bit pushed around. But we're going to build up a little bit of barrier either side here and we're actually going to put a rail on top of this block here and set up two sticky pistons that we can push around using a lever or a um, you know an observer circuit or something like that that is going to push this into this space here with the rail and the block getting pushed into the area where the minecarts are stacked here because that's going to allow us to stack multiple minecarts in the same space. And let me hop up here so that we can build up a little bit more of this and I can give you a really good example. So I've now got this minecart chest up here attached to this rail and we're going to fill this up with stone from this shulker box. Basically so the entire minecart chest is filled up with stone because it's just an item I have a lot of lying around right now. And now that's all filled up with stone this is going to test whether or not we can call items from the same space above this hopper minecart if the minecart chests are stacked. Now, if I remove this block here, that's going to fall down and it is going to come to rest on top of the previous minecart chest because as you can see, as entities, these stack. And I'm actually going to use this kind of formation as just a an aesthetic drawer detail in the museum archives anyway because I feel like opening one of these chest minecarts and just seeing a bunch of items in it makes sense. It kind of looks like a set of drawers just kind of you know, fixed into the wall here. But using this funky piston setup here, we can actually put both of these two chest minecarts into the same space. I'll give you a slightly better demonstration of what's going on here from a minecart physics perspective, because this is actually pretty interesting. If you have a minecart chest up here on a rail, and regardless of what is on this rail below it, if you break the block that this minecart is on, or if the minecart falls down, it kind of snaps into position on that minecart rail. Did you see how quickly that happened? I'll show you that again from a slightly lower height so you can see it all happen in one picture. If I break this block, watch how quickly the minecart chest snaps downwards, almost instantaneously. And that is a behavior of minecarts which we're actually taking advantage of here by stacking it into the same space by affixing it to that rail. Basically, all of the minecart chests that we pour in here will behave that way, and we can have multiple of them stacked up in one go. They will all snap to that rail while that block is occupying that space. So if we want another example of that, I can put this minecart chest in here with the sticky pistons, add that to the pile. We can even put another one on top of here. What are we going to put in this one? I guess the hoppers that I've got on me? Sure, we can stack that on top of that. And now when we press this button, everything snaps into place on top of that hopper minecart. And now the fun really begins, because let's say we want to call a hopper out of this, seeing as we've just put a bunch of hoppers in the chest there. All I should need to do is go into this, put down a hopper, and slowly it removes them from the chest that we just put in the system. And I say slowly because the hopper minecart is actually pulling items out a lot slower than it normally would. At least it seems to be hesitating every so often. And that is because it has to search the inventories of all of the chest minecarts above it before it can locate those items and pull them out of the inventory. And it's having to do that constantly. Meaning that once I place a block in here, you'll notice it kind of stutters its way through the item calling process until eventually it lands you with a full stack. We can replace the coal in there. And so the potential of this system is pretty clear at this point. If we fill up this block space here with minecart chests or with different stacks of items in, we can call any one of them at any time from this hopper minecart and it takes up a very minimal amount of space. Once the whole system is set up, all you need is a hopper minecart, all of the minecart chests in there, and a hopper above it, and you have virtually limitless storage in a very, very small space. And naturally, if you stack a lot of chest minecarts in this space, it's going to be a pretty slow process getting stuff out of this minecart hopper, and I believe Red Nomster even found the limit of the amount of inventories that this minecart hopper could search, and so if you check his video for more details, I'm sure you guys will find a little bit more going on there. But in theory, what we have here is virtually limitless storage in a a very compact space and all we would really need to do would be to tile 
this system over because if you're careful about where you stand where you tread around the outside of this it really doesn't take up all that much space and you could just stack another row of minecarts side by side here until you had a huge amount of storage in what is effectively a 1x5x3 space or however long you wanted to make it I suppose. Now one thing to keep in mind is that if you want to use this system you want to have full stacks of items occupying every space in this chest and when you call an item like I've just done with this stack of stone here you want to make sure there is only one item left in the chest and that's going to be refilled from the hopper system at the top. The problem with the hopper system is that if there are any empty spaces in the chest watch what happens I'm going to stack two chest minecarts onto the same piece of rail here if I just target the rail at the bottom there that should be no problem if I place a decent stack of stone in here the items are still going to drain out of the hopper at the same speed but the contents will actually be split between the two minecart chests it's going to do a decent enough job but it's not always going to split the stacks equally between those two chest minecarts in fact that one there has 31 which means the other one in here should only have 29 which is not an even split it's choosing the chest that receives them pretty randomly and so any empty spaces that are left in any of these other minecart chests are going to start randomly receiving odd stacks of items here and there and so if you want to make sure that you're getting the same amounts of items every time and that the whole system is not getting gummed up with just three or four stone here and there you're going to want to make sure that the minecart chest is full of stacks of items before you start using this system. So for example if I take this minecart chest full of stone out of the way this one here with the buttons in is going to need to be full of buttons or maybe other redstone components maybe pressure plates of similar materials or something like that would fit the bill but I think it kind of makes sense that you need to have all of the stacks of items in here I can probably just fill the rest of this up with the stone that's on the floor right now and all of that needs to be filled up for the system to be able to a call anything out of here and leave one item in the chest and then for that chest to be refilled if you have a hopper feeding items in from the top but that's about all storage I have time for today and my brain is honestly kind of melting right now in the heat of today so I'm gonna leave you guys there hope you guys enjoyed this look at some alternate ways of storing things and the epic storage project we have on the go thank you for watching the Minecraft survival guide my name has been Pixorifs don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon take care bye for now